it's here. Wars I've seen. You know, here, here they play the hardest teams and they win. They play the least team and they lose. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here. And I'm sorry if I can't see. I see almost all of you. You all arranged yourself so perfectly that I can see you all, even though we're sitting down. Well, thank you for being here. As uh, if you read the email, this is our very last session in our Community of Faith Voices series. Um, and I think I'm making the most fun because we have these three fabulous characters who said they're either the Three Stooges or what was the other three Musketeers? <laughs> three Musketeers. Three Musketeers. Yeah. Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers. <laughs> or three of the corner. I'll be the fourth. I'll be. I'll be Leonardo. <laughs> um, to um, give their kind of perspective on what community looks like for them, um, and then we're going to have a discussion about what community looks like for all of us. So. Um, three very different perspectives on um, what this community of faith looks like, what their community of faith outside looks like. Um, so I've got a bunch of questions to them, which I sent in advance, and somebody did way too much homework, so we're going to try to get him off script as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe this is fine. Please jump in. We don't mind hecklers, so if you have anything that you want to know. <laughs> did you say hecklers? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Exactly. We encourage it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perhaps I should put this away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, um, uh, for this series, we've heard from uh, Laura Choi, who talked about um, being an affirming church. We then heard from Cornerstone Family Programs, Holly Denenny. Uh, we heard from Ann Stewart from Princeton Seminary. And we heard from Tom Sheffield, um, kind of talking more about the history of PCM. And then just last week, we heard from Cohome. So we've had a lot of different perspectives over the course of these now um, six weeks. So now we're going to hear from, from all of you. So let me start with um, the first question. What are communities which have had an impact on you in some way? So that can be PCM. can be any community. Any communities that have had impact on you, um, preferably in a positive way, but also negative way is OK, too. So anybody can start. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there, there were two very secular communities that I thought of first. And the more I thought about it, I, more, I, I thought also of some ones that are church related. But one of them existed just down the hill <clears throat> from your home. Mm. And it was in what I think is now Rules and Panadas. It was a little, really, really nothing newsstand that was operated by a guy named Andy Catano. And I can still remember, I, I used to go in there and get my newspaper every morning on my way to school. And I remember Lou Crolio and Sam De Palma and George Bolcar and a guy named Charlie, who was the only young guy of a bunch who just retired from a career with the Morristown the parks department, no, the, the, the public works department. And I would go in there and pick up my newspaper every morning on my way to school, and, and this group of Morristown old timers, and they were lifers, um, they were such a group of characters. I mean, I can still remember their names. I haven't seen them for 30 years, probably. And yet, <clears throat> very quickly, I acquired a nickname, and that was Teach. <laughs> Some of them were union guys. And they knew that I was in a teacher's union, so that kind of caused them to accept me. And I can tell you that five days a week, 36 weeks a year, it was a highlight of my day. I mean, it took, a, it was about five minutes. Wow. And yet, I was part of this community, and I was kind of honored in the sense that they were all long-time Morristonians. I wasn't. And yet, you know, they always looked happy to see me. I remember one time I was wearing a bow tie, and Sam De Palma, who who had a special seat right over by Andy Catano, the owner, um, said, "Ah, oh, he said, teach that jazz bow. It's really making me feel good today." You know, <laughs> and, 
And then the other community that, that, that I thought of also was when I began as a social studies teacher at Lincoln Park High School, um, the members of that department, all of whom were a good 10 to 15 years older than me, um, were, were really, really accepting of this young colleague. I mean, I looked like I was about 14 years old. And one of these guys had fought with the Marines in Vietnam. Another had played on the line for the Cleveland Browns. Another had played football at Yale. Um, they had had a lot more life experience than I ever had. And I was struggling to try to learn how to be a teacher. And yet, they accepted me. They, they treated me with what I now realize was a kind of an unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And when, in the early 21st century, they all started retiring, I was looking around for them, you know, for a couple of years. <clears throat> Eventually, as replacements came in, we had a new community, mm -hmm. and I was the old guy in that mm -hmm. one. And that community meant a lot to me, too. And I was in a, in a, in a tough position sometime around 2014. I remember how that community was present for me. Mm -hmm. So those would be two that I think of. Oh, that's really cool. Rich. I love how it spans so many years and so many, you know, they grew up with you in a way, you yeah. know, and, and were a part of all these different stages yeah. of your life. Yeah, yeah. Every one of us that was a member of that community was a character. You used the word character <laughs> in relation to the three of us as we're trying to figure out whether it's three stooges or three <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think, yeah. Everybody's a character mm -hmm. in a community, and that character, it's, a, it's almost like a successful sitcom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Two comments. First, you don't look much older than 14. The second is that you have now acquired a permanent nickname. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Name tag that's much worse. That's right. And nicknaming <laughs> is something that doesn't happen as much anymore, right? I mean, we yeah. all grew up, and people got nicknames, and I, I don't know if younger people do that. It was a, you know, it was always a, a signifier that you were part of something. Yeah. Uh, George Bernie's got 12 pages. I know, Bernie's got to shut up. up. I, uh, no, you, you did good because now I can really focus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I defer to James. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, similarly, right? I was thinking about this um, last night. Um, and like, what, what is community? What is, you know, what is, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought it's a place where you can be good in your skin. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, um, and I was thinking about my life experiences and where did I kind of begin to feel good in my skin, yeah. right? And not that I had anything, I had a wonderful childhood, right? Mm -hmm. A wonderful, very rural childhood. And, um, and then a summer in college, I worked in an organization in the Castro in San Francisco called Stop AIDS. And it was, uh, if you're familiar, it was like Larry Kramer style, like um, direct action um, place where I sold raffle tickets on the corner of Castro and Market. I um, <laughs> did uh, HIV tests in bars, right? It was like, it brought me out of my shell. Um, <laughs> the biggest um, in the big way, city, right? In the big it city. was sort of um, very far. And so I think the, uh, like feeling, it was, you talk about <coughs> cast of characters, it was a cast of characters, right? And that cast of characters was so scary in the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Intimidating, like your football player colleague, and, right. you know, but uh, in the end, your family, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, you sort of like see yourself in each other and they start to see themselves in you. And, um, and that's what I think about kind of that thread throughout sort of at least my life so far, is finding that kind of where, no matter where I am, right, that, mm -hmm. that place I can be good in my skin mm -hmm. and feel welcome and, um, and also feel welcome in, in, um, in caring for people. Oh, that's fabulous. I love, I, I love feeling good in your skin. Because I think, I think there's a lot of communities where it's like, oh yeah, I like this community, or you know, I'm a part of this community, I feel like I kind of belong, but to really be your true self. I don't know if we all, yeah, there's, very small number, where it's like you're 100% who you are. It was a jolt, right? It was yeah. a jolt in the beginning, um, but a wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Um, also, like, 
there are jolts that can do trauma and there are jolts that sort of uh, kind of wake you up to something new and this was a wake you up to something new. Mm. Right, and that, and that kind of growing confidence, that self-confidence right. that comes with deep acceptance in a community mm -hmm. um, is very empowering. You know, it's not only sustaining and strengthening and, and, and welcome, but it also makes you think, you know, I belong here and I can contribute here. So I wrote down four, and I'll just talk about one. But the four I wrote down was St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I worked there for eight years. Mm -hmm. Balmoral Presbyterian Church is where I became a Presbyterian, where we became a Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. um, then Daytop, mm -hmm. and that's the one I'll talk just a bit about. Mm -hmm. uh, Daytop is in Mend or was in Mendham. It was a place for teenagers recovering from drug and alcohol abuse. Can you hear me back there? No. Oh. oh. <laughs> we waited for that question. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last one is PC, yeah. PCM. But um, so Daytop. <clears throat> so this is after years of industry, after four years of substitute teaching in various school districts around here. I landed at Daytop, and I'm, you know, on the interview was incredibly short. Mm -hmm. I was all prepared and it's like they didn't even read what I had. And I said, you know, it sounds like if I say yes, I'll have a job. And the principal said, yeah, you could always quit. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, I wouldn't do that. And she said, I know you wouldn't. And I'm thinking, how do you possibly know that I wouldn't quit <laughs> after five minutes of meeting me? You know, and, and so, um, uh, why why was it an important community? Uh, I'm recovering, the kids are recovering, we share common struggles in our lives. Um, there was never a doubt when I walked into the school why I was there. Mm -hmm. I knew I had to be there. Mm -hmm. The staff was incredibly supportive, great relationship with Kathleen. From time to time, and Tanya, the, the assistant. The three of us would be there. We'd be the first in in the morning. One of us would break into song, How Great Thou Art. And how do you start a day and go wrong with after singing How Great Thou Art? You know, the three of us, you know? And even though we had really, really tough days, we always knew that we had each other's back. So it was a place that challenged me and expanded me. Mm. I'll leave it at that. I love the having each other's back. You 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 always knew you could rely on each other. That's beautiful. It sounds like we all three mm -hmm. in the community as we mentioned discovered someplace along the line that we were pretty good at what we were doing mm -hmm. in those places mm -hmm. where maybe we went in unsure about that. Mm -hmm. What is one either moment or instance that significantly impacted you in some way, either positively or negatively, or maybe even put you in a different direction? Um, and it could be these communities or different communities. But one moment or, or interaction. You know, I alluded a minute ago to, to some tough times in 2014. And um, at that point in time, my marriage was coming apart. And the good news is, seven years later, it came back together. So that, I, spoiler alert on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Trink, if you're, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> she's at church. Actually, she's driving up to New Haven. <laughs> but um, I had decided, this was early in the school year, and, and we were headed toward divorce, I had decided, you know, rather than go around and talk to each member of my department and have this conversation seven times, mm -hmm. I'll just kind of pull them together. I know what I want to say. I know exactly what I want to say. I know how I want to say it. And we'll just kind of do this all at once. That's, you know, the, the terrible 
efficiency of being a school teacher. You're always trying to squeeze, you know, things into 42 minute <laughs> chunks. You're on this bell schedule and stuff like that. And I thought, okay, that's the best way to do it. I knew exactly what I was gonna say and I was all set to do it. And so we meet up and I start this explanation that I'm very confident I can manage and I start crying. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy with whom I had, I mean, he, he was a colleague and a friend, but he wasn't always easy. I was department coordinator, so sometimes we had to butt heads a little bit. Mm -hmm. This guy, big, you know, uh, former Rutgers basketball star, steps forward and just puts me in a big hug. Oh my gosh. And everybody in the room, and believe me, a lot of these people are not, you know, huggy kind of people. <laughs> one at a time, each one of them does it. It was, it was one of those moments where I realized that, you know, in some ways home wasn't really home at that point in time. No. Um, but in some ways, living in Park High School, and most especially the social studies department I lived in Park High School, was, was something like home. Mm -hmm. you know, and that was community. I thought they were there for me when I needed them. Um, you know, so much I think is, is about unconditional love, but also, you know, a sense that we know one another and we're present to one another. Mm -hmm. That's so, there's so many, but uh, once again, focus, right, focus, and it's, uh, we did a project, many of you know, about undoing racism with this church and the uh, Rendell Presbyterian Church in Harlem about three years and we uh, one of the events that we did together was a southern uh, a tour of the south we we about nine of us from each church flew into Atlanta then we did 2400 miles by van visiting all of the major civil rights and uh, places in the south and we culminated in the Atlanta Center for Civil and Human Rights and there's a place there, there's a whites only counter. And you're invited to sit down at this counter. It's kind of a, this is the way it was. A lunch counter. A lunch, right, that's right, a lunch counter. Yeah, yeah. so they used for, yeah, for service, you know, service. And it's only whites, you know. So you're invited to sit down, put the headphones on and keep your hands on the table as long as you can. So, you know, so the, <laughs> okay, I can do that, right? You challenged me, right? So I'm gonna put my hands on the table. So then the first words that come in is remember your training, you can do this, we got you back, you know. There is, don't react, don't do anything, just, just sit there, just sit there calmly. And then the, then it started, right? What are you doing here? You don't belong here. Who, you know, who do you think you are? And it was just vicious, and it got worse and worse and worse, and the racial epithets, you know? And and it, I physically felt, I had my eyes closed, I physically felt the chair was jerked. It was like someone was pulling at me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm gonna keep my hands on the counter, but boy, it's rough. And then I get up and I'm totally, shattered like all my armor is gone everything is gone i am i'm kind of I'm, I'm, i feel broken i feel lost and then the uh young african-american woman who was with us on this trip she went up saw me she saw me sit down she saw me get up she came over to me and once again you know arms wide open and I'm just crying in her arms, I'm just sobbing. She said, I am so glad you sat down. And I said, I didn't know how cruel we were. That was in about 2017. That has driven me ever since. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
For me, it was a very kind of internal experience. I remember, and this is, um, uh, I clearly kind of wear a few different hats, right? But I think the, um, right in the beginning when, uh, you know, Daniel and I were in that phase of relationship where you're trying to figure out, is this gonna work or not, right? And, um, and I remember thinking like, every weekend, his job, every weekend, like, what is this, right? I was in corporate advertising at the time, and I was kind of always traveling, always in somewhere different. We weren't seeing each other, because clearly Sunday for a thing, and, um, and I was frustrated, right? And sort of, I used to, at the time I ran, all, I ran a lot. I would run, um, you know, go for a couple hours, right? And, um, and I kind of had this realization of, James, if you're going to live with this as a burden, it won't work. If you're going to understand this as a privilege, it might work, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that unlocked a whole set of kind of way of seeing the world, mm -hmm. right? Of um, understanding that, okay, that relationship and then the role that came along with it mm -hmm. is actually a real privilege to kind of encounter people's lives in the way that we do. And then that also drove me to move from corporate advertising to um, working in housing services, yeah. right? And, and mental health, because I was like, man, if what I'm doing from nine to five is such a burden in the rest of my mm -hmm. kind of life, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not perceiving it as a privilege to sell more oil changers for four <laughs> um, Not that that's not really <laughs> important. Yeah, right. I didn't, you know, I didn't go home and really care that much about tires. And, um, but I did care about, right, um, helping a family move into their apartment after living in the shelter, right? Mm. Um, and so it, it, that kind of conversation with myself about you know, Daniel and I were kind of almost at the breaking point. Um, I was like, well, if I'm gonna, if this is gonna work, mm -hmm. I've gotta understand it for a privilege, as a privilege. Yeah. And that just changed my whole wow. kind of set. Amazing. That's such a great way to look at things. Mm -hmm. For a new account. Yeah. yeah. It's made me rethink a couple of things so far. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. that's a great way to look at things. Right. <coughs> I gotta say one thing, because at Daytop, we would come in and often we would say, we get to work at daytop today with a big <laughs> smile on our face, you know? And it makes all the difference, yeah. you know? Yeah. Until we, there are some days that don't feel like Christmas. I think I'm doing that more in retirement than I do in the park, but uh, I, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I, think, I think a really important component of community, the more I thought about it, you know, was um, what I would call generosity of spirit. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, you know, a term of my own, you hear it all the time, but I think generosity of spirit is something that keeps a, a good community thriving. You know, that notion that we all come to it with certain strengths and certain weaknesses and certain things that we do that annoy people, and yet the members of a community you know, contextualize those things really, mm -hmm. really well. And um, I think that generosity of spirit that says, oh, well, you know, you're one of us. Mm -hmm. and, and once again, we accept you, um, warts and all. Mm -hmm. And we've all got warts. Mm -hmm. And I think thriving communities work that way. I also was thinking about hierarchy mm -hmm. within communities. You know, some of them are, are pretty structured, and there's somebody in charge of them. And some of them are not, or at least not formally so. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that one is better than the other. I think we're all members of both kinds of community, mm -hmm. the structured ones with somebody that kind of directs things, mm -hmm. but also the unstructured ones where it, it's more, more free flow. Yeah. I think we're fortunate if we have both. Yeah. 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 I would say I've always been drawn to faith That's where I feel my joy, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. of the most. I, th I think the, the small groups that a lot of members of our church belong to, and 
uh, quite a few members of this group I think belong to seem to, I'm not part of one of them, but they seem to be very, you know, very important to folks. Mm -hmm. I know that because at least one person that I know quite well here in the church oftentimes mentions how important this small group mm -hmm. is to them. Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you're excited about with one of the communities that you're currently involved in? It can be, you know, as small as one project that you're working on or as big as kind of a strategic plan of, of something with a community that you're involved in. Is there anything that you're really excited about right now? This is on page 15 of your notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, I'm going to index. I'm going to A, B, C, D, you know. <laughs> I'm going to set one <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, excited is, you know, scared a little bit, mm -hmm. anxious a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, but also uh, possibilities a little bit, right? Yeah. And so um, I've just been, I've been invited to be on the board of New Jersey Together, and, and I am on, the, I am on that board. And that puts me in a really good community. The board members, there's two from uh, Jersey City together, two from Essex together, and two from Morris area together. So, and we have a nice mix of, uh, of, uh, of gender and, and racial makeup. And once again, we all, it's faith-based, right? Mm -hmm. And we want things to get better and for, for our communities and particularly for the people on the fringe of our communities. And I guess if there's a, a, a passion which drives out of the undoing racism, it would be the disparity in the criminal justice system in our own backyard. If you're a person of color, if you're African American, 22, 22 times more likely to end up in prison than if you look like me, right? Mm -hmm. You're Caucasian. So. That's not an overnight fix. And the and, and then the, the pipeline into prison, the pipeline out of prison, mm -hmm. the cycle, you know. And what have we done to our communities that we've destroyed the families and mm -hmm. we've destroyed? Uh, so anyway, that's a long term. And I. But it's important, and so I got to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's where it that's where it is. That's where it is. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you'll be great. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting more um, involved here, mm -hmm. right? Um, and kind of turning the page from feeling brand brand new to maybe just one brand new. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I think, uh, you know, moving here, moving here was kind of hard, right? Because we weren't fleeing anything. We were coming towards something. We weren't running away from anything. Yeah. And we had a, a wonderful uh, life. Um, and, uh, and I think I feel more at peace and, that, and more sort of in a place to be able to more fully engage here. Mm -hmm. And that feels exciting, right? Yeah. And to feel more connected. Yeah. Don't say that too loud. We have a whole bunch oh, of people. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I heard it loud. I know, I know. <laughs> there could be, a, there could be a, a whole year full of meetings in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Next, next Sunday afternoon, people yeah. are connected, James. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> When you said this, though, I thought last weekend, Trent goes to Gloria Day Lutheran over in Chatham, and every now and then, you know, I go to her church, and mm -hmm. once in a while she comes here. And I was enjoying the service last week. It was All Saints Sunday. We sang um, For All the Saints, mm -hmm. which is, to me, just a, always a beautiful and, and powerful mm -hmm. hymn. But at some point, I thought, gee, I kind of miss all of my friends at PCM. So I was eager to get back here this mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, but I also think in terms of a community that I only entered about a year ago, our Stephen Minister mm -hmm. um, group is, is an important community for me. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying
trying to do Jesus' work um, in a modest sort of a way where we're just basically trying to be present for people and trying to listen to them and kind of walk with them as they're going through crisis. And, uh, you know, the, the five or so of us that entered last fall for training and got really good training from the veterans, um, you know, we have kind of a special bond because we came in together. Um, but the whole Stephen Minister group itself um, offers, offers a really good sense of community. The, the work's not easy. Um, it's not easy to do well, but I think we, we lift up and care for and support one another the same way that we try to lift up and care for and support our care receivers. Mm -hmm. So you all are obviously involved in many different communities, and I know so many of you are involved in so many different communities, but if, if anybody here is looking for either getting reinvolved or trying something new, what would you suggest is something that you would look for in a new community or a new project or new you know opportunity? What is something that you would look for if you were looking for, for something new? Mm. Don't be giving me busy work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has to have some depth, some meaning. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'd say sample around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so much of, of your, your satisfaction and your fulfillment is going to come from whether or not the people that you're encountering are people that appear to be people you'll enjoy working with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that's important. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, I think doing things out of a sense even of Christian obligation is not necessarily, or religious obligation, is not necessarily the path to fulfillment. I think mm -hmm. doing things out of a sense of religious gratitude mm -hmm. for one's blessings is a much surer way to satisfaction. Mm -hmm. uh, are doing things out of, out of an obligation creeps pretty close to guilt. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I mean, <laughs> guilt <laughs> is <laughs> never going to sustain you yeah. over time. You know, I've got to do this because, you know, I'm a sitter or whatever. I, you know, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to result in the kind of fulfillment that you want. But if, if you can do it and say, you know, this is just a way to say thank you for all that's been given me, I, I think that's, that helps. If you can find that in whatever group or groups you're considering being a part of, communities you're considering a part of, I, I think that's more likely to result in satisfaction, fulfillment, and growth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, think so I think it's that, <laughs> again, that kind of, for me, that uh, burden privilege test, right? And then that sort of good in my skin, is it sort of a place that I feel I'm doing work that is a privilege? Um, and that doesn't look the same for everybody, right? We, we have to figure that out for ourselves. And, um, and then is it a place where I feel like these are my people? Um, and I'm, one of, I'm their people, right? Um, and I think that is, uh, for me, like, and it, I, I feel like you said, a sample around, right? Like, it's not gonna happen overnight, yeah. and the first time might be scary or, or whatever, yeah. right? But yeah. I think um, I think it does for me go back to that. If it if it feels if it feels too much like a burden, yeah. then it's not it's right. not right. Yeah. right. Yeah. I think James is absolutely right. You know, when you start to when it when it's time to show up mm -hmm. and you're saying, mm, you know, yeah. I mean I know, I know I gotta do this. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I don't think the yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, you know, it's not like a community that meets on a regular basis, but there are people in the room right now who are, who were just leading worship down at Spring Hills, what, about a week ago? A week ago, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many of you are involved with that, you know, at least a few of you are, and that's not a community that meets on a regular basis, but every time I get to do that, it is so much fun, um, and, and it, fun's a really important element of it. Not everything can be fun, mm -hmm. but if, if it can be, and if you can make it fun, and to some degree you do make your own fun, yeah. I think that really helps. I mean, whenever I'm asked to be involved in that, I always try to find a way to say yes. Mm -hmm. 
I want to say that. Yeah. 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 Work. Yeah. 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 What are some words of encouragement that you all have for PCM, for our community? What are? Do you have any words, or what? It can be word, phrase, any sort of words of encouragement for PCM. Yeah. You know, one of one of the ways we build community, we build Morris area together, we build New Jersey together, is we encourage people to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Mm -hmm. They don't have an agenda. Mm -hmm. What an awesome. And just to have someone sit with you and you can tell a bit of your story and what you're excited about and what your life is like and have them return. You go, you can go <laughs> into a really deep conversation mm -hmm. in the space of an hour. Yeah. If you just be a little bit vulnerable mm -hmm. with each other. And I know everybody here by face and to say hi, but I don't know you. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a words that were given to us by the people in El Bate in the Dominican Republic. The last time we were there, we were all in one big room, the leaders of the community, all of the volunteers had come down and we were saying, oh, we've gotten to know you better than we know our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And one of them turned to us and said, go home and get to know your neighbors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I think I encourage deeper conversations and I know they happen in small groups like Nansen and other places. But find safe places to be with each other mm -hmm. and enter in deep conversations because miracles are born out of that. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> I think being a welcoming community is really, is really important. When I was looking around for a new church, you know, not, not because I had really wanted to do so, but because I chose to leave the faith community that, that Trink and I were both in because of the circumstances. You wouldn't believe how many mainline Protestant churches I walked into in this area where nobody mm -hmm. made any move whatsoever mm -hmm. to say hello, to recognize me, to, to sense that they knew that I was perhaps visiting. And, you know, if What's that scriptural thing? You know, wipe the dust off your feet. You know, I mean, I, 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 was, I was, okay. okay, so that place over there, I'm not going to. And that place over there, I'm not going to. And you know, it became this 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 thing where 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 were people gonna look at me and say, well, here's a visitor. You know, let's let's practice hospitality just a little bit. Let's just say hi. Mm -hmm. That meant a lot, and I think it's it's an absolute must mm -hmm. for our church if we're going to keep this place open for another 300 years or mm -hmm. you know whatever it is what are we are we approaching yeah. in so, 10 years yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well they have an ambassador I'm gonna say odds are ten to one. Kathy, 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 Kathy Aaron. Aaron. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you were the first person that spoke to me. Yes. Yep. 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 No, I, I think so. Right, it is that um, everything that is like here and we do, and it's all vehicles for joy and faith and mm -hmm. sharing love with each other, right? And um, and to me, that all that is secondary to what you just said about the welcome, mm -hmm. right? Um, because we can all disagree, have different opinions about all sorts of things, right? Um, and we should, and but we we shouldn't necessarily have different opinions about about the welcome, about the you know, because <laughs> um, that's what that's what the mandate is. <laughs> Well, thank you to our lovely panel. We're going to ask you all for a minute, but I want to say thank you. Thank you for, for your wonderful answers. Thank you for your wonderful All right, we are going to um, now have a question.
question for all of you in a second, but any feedback or comments that you all want to say um, to, to our lovely, <coughs> lovely people up here? I, I can just say that, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's, go ahead. <laughs> I, I can just say that, you know, I, I concur with what you're saying about community. And I've walked into, like, different churches here. I just moved here about a year and a half ago. And, uh, and the first thing I noticed when I came in is someone welcomed me and greeted me. And, uh, and I think that's important, you know, having a community and a sense of uh, belonging. Uh, so I can tell what you're telling. It's really good to hear that, yeah. you know, that, that that's <laughs> what you were saying when you got here rather than some sort of cold shoulder. Because um, some churches are good at this and some aren't I mean, so some good. Some have good, good sermons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and this one I, I happen to like. They're down to earth and, and can relate to, you know, everyday life. I like that as well. Yes. Other people have rituals, yes. and you follow rituals, and all churches have rituals. Yes. And uh, but I think in this particular case, you know, someone asked me yesterday, <coughs> which church you going to? Because <laughs> I go to different churches, and I said Presbyterian church. And they said, why? I said, well, I like the minister and the sermons. I like the choir. Uh, I like the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I like, you know, the fact that they're more friendly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of churches, you you sit there, you go through service, and there's nothing afterward. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't really get to understand people and communicate. So I think that's important. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I yes, have to agree great. with what you're saying also, because this is my third time visiting. I live in Florham Park, so I live in the area. I've been a Presbyterian my whole life. And I have to say the same thing. Coming, and I've been going to the chapel service, which I absolutely love. I love it's intimate. I love just the peace of it. And I have to say, just the aura of coming in and Everyone has been so friendly and nice, and people come up to me, introducing themselves, welcoming me, and wanting to converse with me. And I feel it's authentic and genuine. I don't feel anyone is like, oh, that's a new face. I really need to go over and say something to her. And then it, like, I'm good for this week. But now I just think it's all coming from a very, like I said, genuine, authentic feeling. And I thank everyone. It's really good to hear this. You know, I, I, I just want to add an, an extra dimension to that. Because I, 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 I agree with what they both are saying. It's only been here for a year and a half, which makes us still new, I guess. But initially and continuously, I feel that people are interested in knowing who I am and how I look at things. And of course, it's exactly the same thing, but, but that was an early feeling and that I had, and that was very different than a lot of other places that, and that we've gone to, you know, quite different. So it's that extra dimension of genuine interest in knowing about you that I think is uh, important. Mm -hmm. Andrew? Yes. I think that welcoming isn't something that we take for granted. And, you know, I'm thinking about the time at the church in the narthex and both in Stephen ministering and in my small group, we had talked about that. And, you know, how very easy it is to immediately link up and chat with the people we know mm -hmm. instead of walking out and looking around to see if there's anybody here that you don't know. Yeah. Although I did do that once, somebody I didn't know, and I went up and said, I don't know you, are you new? We've been here for years. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the hard thing. <laughs> Perhaps lead with a different question. Yeah. <laughs> I had a built-in advantage, and I still think I have it because it's funny, Sam. You say I've only been here a year and a half. I'm new, and you know I've only been here for seven years, and I'm new. No, 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 no. You know, because there are a lot of folks. I'm hanging on to that too, though. As long as I can. A lot of folks who've been here for a long, long time.
time, and you know, they, they're the backbone of the church and everything. But sometimes when I'm in that situation where I think, I've never seen that person before, but I'm also not sure if I've just missed them or that they predate me, I will sometimes say, I've only been here for a little while and I don't know you, you know. And that gives me a little cover, you know. I think you're still talking to them more I don't think I can pull that Yeah, you can't pull that one there. All right, I want you all to grab a post-it note. Each of the tables have a post-it, so then for, for you two, if you want to reach over and grab a post-it and a pen, and write down as many communities as you can think of that are important to you. And it can be you know, as small as neighborhoods, it can be you know, two of your best friends that you hang out with all the time, or it can be as big as your church, or your, you know, where you've worked. Um, and then think about what is one of those communities that you're excited about something, you know, something that's going on in that community. So we're just going to take like two minutes to do that and then we'll, we'll share together. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll one for all. No. <laughs> okay, I'm right. Sandra. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. What list all the communities that you can think of that are important to you in some way. So in whatever way you define as important. And then think about for one of those communities what's something you're really excited about for that community. because I have to tell you that my list today compared to my list 10 years ago, today it's much shorter than this. <laughs> and, and that's really, in, I mean, this, this is the first time I've actually thought about this. I was involved in so many different things, but not in, 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 in any exceptional deep way. Now I'm, I'm involved in much smaller groups. I, I, I'm, a much smaller list, but I think in a much deeper way. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'll just take the one thing on my list, yeah. which, which I have the most on, and that is Boy Scouting. I, I'm very interested in trying to uh, inform uh, the wider community, but also in the scouting community, of the history of scouting and the, and the things about it that, that actually make it very, very different than the way that they think about it. Mm -hmm. And, and one thing that I've been driving home continuously 
uh, on the national and even international level in scouting is how inclusive scouting has been throughout its history. In, in fact, as an institution, by far the most inclusive organization in the United States over its, its 100 year history. Mm -hmm. And most people have no idea that that's a fact. And it's an absolute un, uh, unquestionable fact. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I, I'm excited about delivering that message to that community so that people understand the place where they came from as an organization. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. Yeah. And you've got an Eagle Scout right over here. Oh. And right, oh, right back yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Eagle Scout right here. I'm a son who wants yeah. yeah. That's so cool. It's a mini community. <laughs> <laughs> Eagles of PCM. <laughs> I'll add that. Yeah. <laughs> of what happens in most co-educational groups. <laughs> the female student puts her hand up and the boy student jumps in and barks and says, that's what's good. I go with it, Mary. <laughs> and so Mary's the contrarian. <laughs> I just put on my list our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And that's more something that I think we need to work on. Because we don't really know our neighbors. We live in this townhouse community. Couple of miles where we've lived for many years, and we didn't really need our neighbors to be our friends because we had a circle of friends here and in our other neighborhoods. And it's just in the last few weeks I've gotten to know a few things that have been going on with some of the neighbors and thinking we have to find a way to connect. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to get a dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Great vehicle. Yeah, yes. Great vehicle. <laughs> Rent a baby. You rent a baby. I remember being on a trip one time where somebody was walking through the lobby <coughs> with a stiff leash. There was nothing on the other end. Maybe that's what we need. <laughs> but there was a whole story on the other end. Expect to be part of a community if you're not willing to give to the community. Mm. Um, I've been a non member of this church for probably close to 40 years, and there's something that draws me here. Um, I'm not a Presbyterian, uh, so I, I question why, why do I come here? Other than my wife, I have to drive her from her chauffeur <laughs> to get to church. But um, there's something that happens here, uh, feeling accepted. I remember when Michelle and I first came here, uh, Tom Sheffield actually was like the welcoming committee, and he introduced himself and wanted to know who we were. And then the next week, he said, hello, Paul and Michelle. It's like, how can this guy remember? Uh, that was one of his gifts. He, he remembered everybody that he, that he met. Um, also within the large communities, you find that they're a split off of, um, or offshoots of many groups. For example, I became a member of the welcoming committee and you start to have an affiliation with other members so that when I sign up, I want to make sure James is going to be ushering with me. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a mini community of two. <laughs> and we check, you know, I go online 
when we have to sign up to see if he's. <laughs> so, but it is a, there's something you get out of the community, but you also have to be willing to give to that community. I think at some point in conversations like this, someone always invokes the old sitcom Cheers with its um, no. famous you know, line you know, where everybody knows your name, you know, and, and you know, that's not community in and of itself, just that everybody knows your name, but it's it's a symptom mm -hmm. or a, an indicator mm -hmm. that community exists. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have been part of the AA community for many, many years, and I don't know that there could be any community where self-care combined with the welfare of, each, of one another is more important. I mean, and there's such a sense of hope. Um, AA says, you know, uh, whenever anyone, anyone reaches out for help with the hand of AA, always be available. And for that, I am responsible. And that's what it is. It's sharing, this is what I did to recover, and maybe what I did can help you. Mm -hmm. That's certainly been part of my life for many years now. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. I, I would affirm that I'm part of the TA community. And it's not General Assembly. <laughs> 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 That's its own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Frederick Beekner writes about AA as the embodiment of what church ought to be. And he writes very powerfully about it. Right yeah, he said, you know, you could, you could, this is no reflection on anything we're doing around here, but he said, you could get rid of your organ, you could get rid of your altar guild, you could get rid of this and that, but you have to have that core embodied in his mind in Alcoholics Anonymous or the other similar sorts of groups. Mm -hmm. That's the, the core and the essence of Christian love. And this is because uh, we were all part of a small group that actually focused on the idea of, of love our neighbor as the as the culmination of our uh, of our whole series of meetings, and we found the extreme commonality between the place where we were heading with that group, and 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 our experience with the AA community, and then I I thought that was extremely enlightening those conversations. Well, oh, we are at time, so we got to move on over to the other side of the building. We have to do something else? I, I, think we, I think we got something else that we have to do. But thank you all, and thank you for participating. This was so wonderful, and thank you to our wonderful Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. Absolutely. And next week, we're going to be um, talking about gratitude. There's something related to trees and building trees yeah. and donuts. So there is going to so I'll leave it at that, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have a fun mystery. time. It's a mystery, and it'll be, it'll be a one-off class, so it'll be, but it's going to be fun. So, so be sure to come back to And later today, we have our um, fun and fabulous funeral seminar. Is that what call it? I'm not going to say that in the big church, but that's, oh, yeah. that's my own private name for it um, that we're having later um, around 11.30, maybe a little before that, um, here, uh, right here. And then we have our Faith on Film at 4 o'clock. So you can just stay all day if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Stop shopping. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but thank you all. And thank you for being part of our community. You should be yourself. Thank you. Thank you.
supposed to be welcoming. I am supposed to be welcoming. Oh, like, oh like, no! I didn't like, do sign it. Huh? I didn't. I didn't check. I warned Betty. Betty. I warned Betty. I warned Betty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh good, oh good. Oh good, I'm so glad. What was interesting 